uh, the the mid laner. Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, Rabbles and mid laner. DK Fergus three, four Yanch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alrighty, let's get into game number one. That's the three series. If you guys think you know who's going to win and you are interested in betting, then you can head over to EGBet, egb.com. The details are in the banner below the screen where you can find the odds. Have a little look and decide what you want to do with the sponsor of this tournament. And that's pretty cool to support those guys, but let's get into this game. So yeah, we are going to have the Lesh track heading middle. Railball going to be playing the Lesh, and that's going to be played into the Invoker. I feel like this is a decent lane for the Lesh. I think he's going to have a pretty this time using the split earth to secure those range creeps should be pretty happy true <laughs> yeah the iron are not something we fear. <laughs> Oracle can be kind of annoying, but it's meh. It's very meh. Yeah. Yeah, and we saw this Lesh into Spectre thing yesterday, where the Lesh track is kind of stuck at one point in the game when the Spectre has Blade Mail and she's just a little too tanky for him to actually tear through, so he kind of just has to turn up his abilities and kind of just let the specs blade mail timer oh run out before he can really start just like going ham in these team fights can get a little bit awkward but most of the time the left track's going to be fine in this matchup i mean the hero just fundamentally does quite well against spectre i would say it stops her wanting to buy manta as much as well because he's just going to kill those illusions so quickly Yeah, not just for the Leshrac, right? Also for the uh, Viper, can be quite annoying for him. Jug doesn't care about it though, at least. Wow. <laughs> Guy likes his Jug. I can, I can agree with that. I mean, the hero is like, he's almost always good. And it's nice to have that good laning hero as well. Stun comes out from Collapse, but he's taking a lot of damage from that spin from Aggressive Charge, just going straight off the bat. Oh, it looks like he leveled the Astral Spirit first. Interesting. Actually, no, that's not very interesting. Sorry, I thought that was natural order for some reason. No. First cast of the day, and I still warming up. You know how it'd be. Deny. Very musical lane as well, with the Io just tethering all the uh, all the creeps over and over. But yeah, the Collapse and Sovat are really just kind of going at it. One thing I can see later on as well is um, the ability to just spam out double edge with the Io healing you up all the time. That sounds pretty strong without mana cost double edge anymore. That sounds pretty good. Meanwhile, I made some hits being traded in here as Toronto Tokyo lanes into Rail Ball. These two guys battling it out for the CS. Denied. It's so good, isn't it? <laughs> I read it the first time and I was like, what is that? And I was like, actually, I love it. I don't know why I love it, but I do. <laughs> oh, stun lands. Kind of needed to land that stun though. I think he was dead if he didn't. <laughs> Short sighted of you. Boca doing pretty well in this mid lane to start things off. Meanwhile, down at bottom, it's DK Fogus and Yam running into Boposhka and Yataro. Taro. No, that's that's not much. It feels <laughs> it's just a, it's just a chill lane. All all lanes are chill lanes. Kyle. Chill laning phase. First blood. Um, my my bet for first blood is going to be like seven minutes. I think. Okay.
So bad trying to get the pull here. Not quite able to do so. Spin comes down on collapse, but uh, Bad is there with the connection, with the tether, to keep his centaur nice and healthy. And it will just be some heavy harassment, and that's about it. But still, I mean, this jug kind of controlling this lane here. They're not really keeping the centaur very well tapped, topped off on HP, so aggressive child feeling pretty free. Oh, wow, yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Getting XP, but not getting the farm so much, really. And I mean, I say that they're also both level three on the side. Uh oh, they're running him down under that tower. He's gonna get himself out away though. And Toronto, Tokyo does not have any more spells to throw the way of this last track, so he is gonna survive. Yeah, that centaur is scary. Oh, bottom lane though, it's actually the Oracle is going to be your first blood as DK Focus and Yemich managed to run him down. They just land their spells on him. They just throw all those poisons his way and he will drop. Yep, so pretty good start for uh, win strike down in this bottom lane, but unfortunately their mid lane is, is just not really going that well. And actually the Sentinel is really starting to roll over this dog on the top. This aggressive child doesn't really have much in the way of support here as Jakalas has just kind of been trying to play around the creeps. And the Sentinel with a couple of levels now really starting to bully as Jakalas goes in. He's going to be able to grab the bounty rune here. Might die or might TPing out. What's the plan? Oh, 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 oh. Nah, he's not bothered. Yeah. Oh, get the courier, Decalus! Get the courier! Ah, oh, no! He can't quite reach it. Oh, so close. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, um, the jug as well, to be fair, but yeah. The Dyer's hide has grown thick. Jug is getting a lot of levels, and he's he's doing okay in farm. I mean, he's doing better than Spectre in farm, that's for sure. Yet, Toro is uh, not having a great time. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that break can be very frustrating. And Yamich is kind of playing creep guard onto uh, Maposhka. Oh, 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 bit of trading going on up in the top lane as Aggressive Child and uh, Ducalis go toe for toe. He's jacked, bro. Don't come near him. This Io is all doing a great job and just kind of dueling with Ducalis, forcing him out the lane, forcing him Radiant's away from the creeps over and over, being very, very rude. Fading. A tithe to the impurities. Movement top. Yeah, he really wants to make a kill into Jug. Mm -hmm. Sneaky, sneaky, moving through the trees. Winstar might not be ready for this one. Toronto, Tokyo, trying to make a plays. He's going to run into Duke Callison, so which isn't really the hero he wants, but it's a hero he's going to have to settle for as they'll run him down. A couple of right clicks coming through. Cold snap to make sure he does drop, and that's going to be that. Again, not the hero he wanted, but that's still pretty good. Mm hmm. Getting a bit crowded. Radiant structures are fortified. They require DK Fogus, you do not have a jungle to fall back to. Please keep that in mind. <laughs> Luckily, he's leaning into a spectre, so he's perfectly happy. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh, he's trying. He's trying to get that stomp off, but isn't quite able to do so. But Rebel coming in, thinking he's trying to bring down the IO, but realizing the Savoke is just doing too much damage. If he goes to the IO, he gives up his life, and that's not a trade he's willing to make, so Rebel backs himself away. Dire 
Tower's middle tower is under attack. No gale can snuff the flames. Dyer's yep. middle tower is learning to fear. Wow. Yeah, Ducalis, he's, he's not going to be able to defend this. <laughs> no. A rebel needs to find the Spectre here. If he doesn't find the Spectre, then this is a terrible trade. And he's just going to show himself in lane. Yatara is not going to walk into that. All right, it's a terrible trade, Deepin. There is little it can do. Radiant's bottom tower is now but kindling. Not great, and now he's actually coming into the mid lane, looking onto Jakalis, man. He's making this dude his well, it's it's I don't wanna say what, but Jakalis is just being pushed under the tower. Dyer's he's gonna be okay, luckily. Nice and tanky, but Evoker just asserting his dominance life. over the Delta Titan again and again and again. Dyer's top tower is feeling its No, mortality. no, that would be a very rude. I wouldn't say that. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Yeah, just start starting on you. Oh, quick spin out from the Juggernauts. Saves him from the tornado Dyer's of Toronto, Tokyo. But again, just finding so much space for his team in this game so far. Simvoka just putting on the pressure. Pretty really great job. Remember what we said before and that this game was going to come down to how the Jug did in learning phase? Well, he's currently fifth in net worth, which is not where he wants to be at all. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Ulti out dodged though. DK Fergus goes in with a Viper Strike. Mm -hmm. Dyer's top tower is feeling its mortality. Dyer's top tower has fallen. The Earth seems relieved. Yeah, absolutely. And what I love is he's doing stuff like this. He's just running onto the enemy team. They're going to drop the Haunt in as well to try and get on top of the Viper. Can they bring him down in time? Nice dodge out from the Spectre as she uses the Haunt and the Reality to jump away, dodge out the stun, come back in and finish the job onto DK Focus. Really stylish plays, but now Collapse could be in some trouble. Spectre just going for the TP away. Collapse might not be so lucky, but they can't close the gap on the Centaur. He's a little bit too quick. They don't actually have the cash for him as now Toronto Tokyo looking around. He sees his boy. He says, hey, Jakalis. Did you want to play some Dota? No, sir. Cold snap onto you. Tornado as well. Cancelling out the stomp. Oh, the poor guy. The poor guy. Once again, Jakalis falls to the hands of Toronto Tokyo. Yes, Collapse gets the kill, but we all know the real man. He, he is in love. He is in love with this uh, Elder Titan. They're going to take a trip down to bottom. The aggression doesn't stop. Look at this. They're on top of Yamich as well. The pressure. It is too damn hot from Toronto Tokyo. So bad as these two heroes link up. Find the kill on the bottom lane as well. And just, just dominating this whole map right now. Windstriker scared wherever they are. Stop. Stop Invoker. He's, he's looking at DK Focus now as well. Are you kidding me? He's going to go for another kill here? I mean, this is so strong with the overcharge, with the cold snap. Nice little dodge out again. Nice Viper strike. Very cool. Omni Slash going to come through. Is it going to do enough damage to bring anyone down? Nope, they share it very nicely. Now the stun comes through. The Juggernaut pretty low here. Does have a spin available though, so should be okay. The collapse still looking for it. I think they might be poking a little bit too hard here. It's so bad. It's going to go down. Collapse maybe as well, but no. But Poshka comes in with the save. Trevor's headed around to DK Focus. DK Focus is going to lose his life as Toronto and Tokyo. Coming in for the backlands. Nice tornado holding back the three of them, but it doesn't look like he's going to be able to save. Although I say that, Collapse is actually going to be able to get himself to the trees. He might be okay, but no, they want him. They want the big guy. They want Toronto Tokyo, and they are going to find him. Finally, his reign of terror comes to an end. But what an insane three minutes of gameplay from this invoker as he just gets kills and puts pressure across the map, making so much space. new no that's for sure it's a interesting game uh when striker kind of playing very responsively but they're gonna go for their first proactive play here uh, as they smoke up and head in towards that bottom lane they want to try and find this invoker who's currently showing as uh, he's got himself a meteor hammer queued up if you kill him now it's going to delay that meteor hammer quite a lot 
And in they go, Yules comes out, any help coming in for Mr. Toronto Tokyo, there is nothing, he is gone. Nice gang from Windstrike there. Radiance Middle Tower is losing its foundation. Radiance Bottom Tower is under attack. Yep, well, this feels pretty good. Radiance Bar. And again, as I mentioned before, your Toro doesn't really want to build the man to this game since they are just going to instantly die to the Leshrac. Uh, Juggernaut is going Battle Fury as well, so just really no desire particularly to, to build that Manta, but with the Atos, he's probably going to have to, so yeah, it does queue it up now, but it's not particularly high value item in this game. True enough, true enough. Enough. Meanwhile, a fight breaking out in the middle lane as both teams kind of poking at each other. This time the Viper Strike will land to the Invoker, but the Post Crew is there to throw in that magic resistance and make him take absolutely zero damage here. <laughs> yeah, it's not feeling like a good yeah, pretty good. Now Split Earth comes down as well, but he's got to pop that ultimate and try and get himself away. But he's got a long way to run, and with the slow coming down on him, he's got a poison attack. But TP comes out from the IO just in time. I'm wondering. The Centaur? Yeah, I think he's okay. Centaur is ready on the side. He's TP'd back in. And he's got the blink stun available and now he's gonna do it onto the viper here they won't try and make this play but the arena comes down they've actually managed to trap the invoker inside that arena meanwhile dk focus getting pretty low they need to finish the job though as he's actually scared well the deep amount of damage the only time comes through kills off collapse as well so bad probably gonna force this damage we'll see if he's able to survive he is not he falls and now rail ball pushing forwards looking for more it's gonna be toronto tokyo the next hero he finds right clicks coming on through toronto tokyo what have you got he's got himself a ghost watch try and get himself away there is a sentry available but they don't have the catch for this Invoker and Toronto Tokyo is going to get himself back, although he's still looking. He sees his boy. He's like, Hey, Ducalis, I love you very, very much. But Ducalis is him now. He's not falling for the charms of Toronto Tokyo. He'll back himself away. No, they can clear out that vision. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Regeneration. Some good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, like he could use his Yules to avoid it, but at this point, the Yules is their, their initiation tool. Like that's that's how they're finding the kills in these fights, so he doesn't want to use it for that reason. Yeah, I mean, it's double the mana cost for, like, 50% extra. Tower is yeah. under attack. It's a little, it's a little, the math doesn't check out. But at the same time, that damage is very, very useful. I think it comes down to whether you want to be farming or fighting. True enough, true enough. Well, so far, win strike. I mean, this Shuck's still leading the net worth chart, so clearly not struggling in that regard. In comes Toronto Tokyo, trying to engage upon this mass. So much damage coming out from these two, and then with the relocate, Collapse will come on top of him as well, and they'll be able to bring down Yamich. That tasty little four position will go down to the strike off Yellow Submarine. Radiance Pipe blink, tower nonetheless. Is <laughs> it will fall like a ripe apple. Pretty insane how farmed the centaur is. He is huge.
But again, game's slowing down a little bit as we look for these timings. Spectre trying to get in for the Manta. Meanwhile, the Juggernaut, he has just got that Battle Fury coming out to him now, along with the Mask of Madness, so this uh, greedy farming build, but he is really going to start to accelerate, which is uh, got to be something which Yellow Submarine are aware of and have a plan to play into. I mean, when you see the Juggernaut's build, what is your game plan now from Yellow Submarine? Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. It may yet stand. Yeah. Dyer's bottom about the little assassinations rather aid. than the, uh, the big walls. <laughs> Cut blob. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Yeah. It's pretty nuts. I mean, you can see here, the guy's just so confident. Like, he sees two heroes right in front of him, and he's just going to go and take the creep wave anyway and collapse and so by like, oh, we don't actually see anyone, so he can't make any counterplay, play, we just gotta let Aggressive Child farm in front of our faces, which is very sad. Nope. We rely not upon fortune. Yeah, that's what I was saying. King, but they weren't doing that, so I assume they just didn't see the other heroes and they're like, ah, oh, and you might have some backup heroes to rescue. But no one is surprised Leshrac's gonna come at you. And then the uh, the overcharge as well to give him that max health regen uh, percentage for when he needs it. Radiant's it'll either come into him, it'll come to the Spectre, it'll come to the Invoker, fast. depending who needs the attack speed and who needs the healing at any given opportunity. Dyer's courier has been yeah, Toronto Tokyo with this very Radiant's interesting build. He's gone for Meteor Hammer and Glimmer fast. Cape on Invoker. So his strike potential is very Radiant's interesting, but I mean Glimmer Cape and Invoker is this. He's playing around a little bit here. Yotaro's going to come in as well. They want to try and bring down the Mars. The stun will come through, but it's not going to make a difference as the Invoker is still able to finish him off. Now Aggressive Child around the back, but doesn't actually have the vision to get on top of this Invoker. So I can't do anything about it. And Toronto Tokyo is just shoving his face into the Juggernaut's face, saying, Hey, buddy, you want to come at me? I'm coming at you, dude. He's chasing him down. The stun comes through. Beautiful timing from the side of Collapse. I'll take down the Juggernaut. He's dead for 50 seconds. A great play from the side of Yellow Submarine as they see an opportunity and they take it. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. It fights for its the life. Dyer have fortified their grove. Indeed. Yeah, and they're buffing her up so Dyer's much as well. They've got the overcharge in two seconds. They've got the alacrity. Mode Ramsey's 2050. <laughs> oh, I love I love the uh, the 2015 on the end. That's a bit of that's a bit of salt right there. Dyer's top tower has been lost to war. Hold it. Yeah, I was winning everything. Winning absolutely everything. Oh, okay. That makes sense that he's named himself that then, because uh, you know he's like, yeah, I'm 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 on the same path. Three minutes in, and Windstrike is starting to bleed pretty heavily. It's Juggernaut, I mean, he's still farmed, you know, the, the, the Leshrac and the Juggernaut, they're still very farmed, but in terms of actually coming into the team fights and utilizing this farm, it's, it's proven to be quite difficult as Yellow Submarine just kind of finding the awkward engagements rather than just going for the full five on five.
don't mess with the spec. She is, yeah. With this Scouty, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly sure Yutaro then feels like, you know, she is going to feel like the alpha carry in this game, when it's previously, I, I don't think she has. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> Toronto Tokyo sees his lover again. Meanwhile, uh, aggressive child could be in some trouble. He does have that spin though, so he's gonna be able to get himself back. TP in for um, Rail Ball as well. Gonna come forward here, maybe looking for something, but has to be cautious. Doesn't really want to play into this uh, Spectre with the blade mail. It's pretty scary though, saying that. Oh, beautiful Lotus timing there from Collapse. Throws Rail Ball up into the air, but there's a buyback coming out from Jukaz. They want to try and take this fight as Yamich goes down to the bottom lane, but that means there is no Invoker and there is no uh, Oracle for this fight. So they're just going to lose so bad straight off the bat. Collapse on Yutori. They need to get away. They turn around with the stun. So much damage coming through to the ledge. He's dead. Oh my goodness. So much damage coming out from Yutori and Collapse there as they just take down that Lesh Rack. And now on the sidelines, they see DK Focus. They're going to pop that horn to try and go in deep as DK Focus is going to lose his life. Meanwhile, also the Spectre looking across, decides to go onto Aggressive Child. Aggressive Child going for the TP away, should be successful in doing so. So he will not fall. But still, the Lesh Rack, man, playing so, so quickly there. Dyer's top tower is under attack. It fights for its life. Yeah. Underestimating the damage of uh, Desolate for sure there, because that was attack. what did the most damage to him. That was uh, 720 damage from the Desolate with Dyer's those mental illusions. Yep. Too scary for them Dyer's to deal with. And now, well, attack. they're on those barracks. There's still those Aegis up on this Spectre. Doesn't wait from sleep. Arena in the back line. Samar's trying to make something happen here as he jumps forwards. Manages to get three inside that arena. What's it really going to do? Well, Rebel's going to come forward. Yummy Sass as well onto the Invoker. Can they get him down? Yes, they can. Invoker is dead. And I'll look for more. Rebel trying to get on top of Mahoshka, but meanwhile, the Inspector's going in pretty deep here. He's already taken down Ducalis, but realizing that it might be time to get himself away. Oracle still backing him up. Eotaro gets on top. Beautiful spit, but Collapse comes in with the stun to stop that. Nether Toxin coming on down, but now it comes in. Spectre in some trouble. They do have the False Promise, though, to drop onto Yotoro, and they're going to do so immediately because they want to keep him alive for the fight and keep that damage coming through. Don't forget, has the Aegis, salves out on him. You're absolutely right, keeping him nice and healthy and he's going to be able to get healed up hugely and come back into this one. Meanwhile, Sentinel stuns up Jug, but it's the Viper. He's not going to make that TP away. He is dead. Yotaro looking for his next target as the Agre Juggernaut has to spin himself away, leaving Yamich for dead. They're just dying. So many heroes dying and another jump forward. Heroes Rail Ball throws in the Yules onto Collapse to stop him getting off that stun. The Aegis now runs out. Out, and that might be enough to force out the yellow submarine as a buyback comes through on the Viper and the fight finally ends. Yeah. They need a way to get on the back lines. They need a way to deal with this Io and this Oracle. I mean, this double heal support duo is just feeling unstoppable right now. And they don't have that. Oh my Killing goodness, do Callus as well? He's just gonna take down another Yatoro. What are you doing, buddy? He's just going for the kills. Oh my goodness. To a future of grief. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. No. Nope. bottom tower is no more. Trying to run himself away. Stun comes in. Doesn't connect, unfortunately. And that's also a cataclysm being wasted from the Invoker. Did I hear a squeak? It really was. <laughs> yeah. Come on, bro. It's a level 25 juggernaut. Give him some respect.
Dyer's top barracks could burst. Going for the Agonims next on this jug. I mean, this might be a way to get to the back lines. Maybe if you uh, swift slash your way into the fights and then kind of find the back lines with an Omni slash, could be what they need. I don't know though. I almost feel like you need like a blink or something on this jug Dyer's or Abyssal would they probably be better just to try and find some backliners. Yeah. Bonage. Um, he's gonna have to pop the Omni Slash defensively here. The Mantis gonna absorb most of it. I mean, the Otaro is not really taking that much damage, and now the Juggernaut, oh, man, he's in front of them all with his pants down. He's gonna get killed off. That's a gem delivered straight into the IO's pockets as well. What was that? The Juggernaut falls down for 75 seconds, does have that buyback as the spare comes out onto the centaur it was actually a really nice play there from Yamich to allow the viper to tp but unfortunately the viper thought he wasn't getting out of it so he cancelled his tp and therefore didn't get out very sad dyer's bottom tower is under attack it may yet stand yeah dyer's yeah. bottom tower has fallen dyer's middle tower is learning to fear Collapse is doing some solo play nonsense as they <laughs> drop Yamich, oh my god. Make it stop. Is there a point where they're just going to tap out at this point and be like, okay, guys, you know, that's enough. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Yeah. No gale Dyer's to stop structures are fortified. Uh, oh boy. Collapse with E played on the uh, center. Not something I've seen before. Rebel's gonna lose his life fairly instantly. Decalus as well. Force back into the fountain. Still no GG's coming out. They're gonna have to force it out of their clips at this point. But uh, dead they very much are. Still, they'll get one more chance to fight as four. It looks like. Nah, nah, GG. There it is. It's gonna come out. Game number one. It will go. Yellow submarine inside 31 minutes. A very masterfully completed draft, to be honest. I mean, these guys just look like they've played with these five heroes like 20 times over with the way they played this one. Really was like smooth and buttery from the side of Yellow Submarine. Uh, Windstrike, a, a, a bit chunky and uneven, I would say.